Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to this nice and sunny Pentecost Sunday. That's why the parents have turned red. Red is used as the color for the Holy Spirit because of the tongues of fire and the symbolism that is associated with that. And so today we're going to look at how the Holy Spirit makes the relationship that we have with God possible. We are going to be, I think, winding up our Bible class on the Old Testament uh, interpretation, how to uh, look at various types and genres of uh, literature in the Old Testament this, this coming Wednesday with a final video and uh, discussion. And uh, there will be no men's group this coming Saturday. However, uh, Sage had asked to have that moved to the 18th. So that's, uh, that's how that's looking. Otherwise, there's really uh, not a whole lot in terms of uh, other announcements and what have you, we are doing divine service setting four, and so that is at page 203 in the four part of the hymnal, and we will begin with the opening hymn, O Holy Spirit, Grant Us Grace. that we cannot free ourselves 
from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God has given His only begotten Son to die for each and every one of you, and for His sake He forgives you all your sins, as I called and ordained servant of that same Christ and by His authority. I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. only the beginning of what they will do, and nothing that they propose to do 
will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their languages so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore, its name was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues as of fire appeared to them, and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others mocking said, <laughs> they are full of new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words, for these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And it, I will show wonders in the heavens above, signs in the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Please rise as we sing together the Alleluia in verse. <laughs> Say to you, I am going away, and I will come to you. 
If you loved me, you would have rejoiced because I am going to the Father. For the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Together we confess the Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed on page 206. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God and Son of God, the God of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made. Being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, and who for us men, and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was united by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us from the flesh of Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he, he will come again with the glory to judge both the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the Lord of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy priest in the apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The sermon title is, When the Fire Goes Out. What do you do when that fire you had, perhaps for somebody special, or perhaps whatever desire that was driving you in a great activity that you were a part of or what have you. What happens when the fire goes out? What do you do? Where do you turn? And how can you find new meaning as a result uh, in spite of all that might be going on? When you hit a dip in your life, when you hit a low point, when you hit a point where you're confused, where can you turn? To whom can you turn? And how is that going to make a difference? You see, when we look around in this world, we see it everywhere. It's May to December romances, right? You know, couples fall in and out of love all the time. And it seems like if you don't tick off all the boxes that uh, somebody has, they just, you know, dispose you. We, have, we live in a disposable culture. And uh, it's, it's just the uh, relationship, quite frankly, don't last as long as warranties these days. And... Uh, the question then comes, what about our relationship with God? Well, from his point of view, he's doing everything he can. The Lord has made it clear in John 3, verses 16 to 17, that he loves us. God so loved the world. God loved the world this much that he sent Jesus, his only begotten son, and he sent him to suffer and die in our stead because we done sin. And he sent Jesus not to condemn but to save us. There's a difference between condemnation and saying this is right and this is wrong. People often confuse judgment with condemnation. Judgment is knowing what to do, right and wrong, that sort of thing. Using your judgment and also judging whether or not somebody is upholding standards of right and wrong. You have to have a world that agrees on what is right and what is wrong in order to have any kind of judgment that is viable. And once the standard stops working the same for everybody, then it's just a power game. God does not play power games with us. God wants us to have an eternal life with Him. That's kind of the opposite of the power game. And yet, how fickle are human beings? You know, you see it all over the place. It's 
It's hard for people to have relationships with God. There are different reasons why people fall away from faith. Some people are just sort of disgusted with what goes on. Other people, you know, have a tragedy in their life that they can't seem to overcome. Uh, some people just become different. There are all sorts of reasons why we don't keep up our end. And yet here God is still in the world not to condemn us. He might tell us that we're right or we're wrong, but he's not coming to condemn us. He wants to save us. But will we permit that? Because he doesn't want to do so if we are dead set against it. You know, even if we experience the fire of the Spirit, if you will, like the apostles did, our sin does its best to quench those flames. You know, it's easy to be a new convert full of energy. It is easy to be a part of a congregation that's on the rise. I've seen this when I, uh, a couple of different places I live. But it's hard to be enthusiastic amid empty pews. It's hard when getting out of bed is painful. And getting through the day is a challenge. And yet, how near or far is Jesus from us in those hard times? Both Jesus and the Father have promised to come to those who love them and make their dwelling, their home, with such people. Imagine that God is your roommate. It could be very interesting. But... He wants to love on us in a big way. He loves us so much that he wants to dwell with us. He wants to make us his family. And in making us his family, he kindles love for him in us. We who are spiritually dead have been made alive by none other than the Holy Spirit, the one who caused the flames to appear above the heads of the apostles. And because the Holy Spirit has enlightened us, he is called, gathered, enlightened, and sanctified us, there is a consequence for loving God, and that is keeping his word. We keep his word in our minds. We learn what the scriptures have to say. We learn where the scriptures have to say it. And that gives us the the tools in our toolbox we need to deal with the world as Christians. And then we keep Scripture in our words. That is to say, when things come up in our lives, the words that we remembered from Bible study, the words that we remembered from confirmation, the words that we remembered from Sunday school, they come to mind and they apply themselves to a specific situation. When I was three years old, I was taught two basic truths in Sunday school that are still true today. The one is Jesus is the light of the world, and the two, Jesus died on the cross to take away our sin. And they did that every opening. We all gathered together, regardless of age, gathered together before the altar, the beginning of Sunday school, and they always said those two things at the opening, and they always sang the Lord's Prayer at the closing of Sunday school. Guess what you learn really well when you start off young like that? It becomes a part of you. It becomes a part of the warp and the woof of how you think about stuff. And the words of Scripture are, you know, they're just who you are. And then we keep it in our deeds. We love our neighbors as ourselves. We love our Lord, as he has loved us. But, here's the thing, we always fall short. We always fall short of the glory of God. We always miss the mark. And that's what sin means. It means to miss the mark. Or it can be transgressed, to go over the line. We miss the mark, we go over the line, we mess up. But even then, at those cases, Jesus will not abandon you. Why? Because he has come not to condemn, but to save. And that should be something that you treasure. Because no matter what you might face, whether it is illness, whether it's penury, whether it is 
hard times, whether it's struggles in your own life, in your relationships, Jesus is still there not to condemn you, but to save you. That doesn't say that he'll give you a free pass in everything you do. He will tell you what is right and what is wrong. But he is always trying to save you. He wants to save you until the moment you draw your last breath. He is there for you. But Jesus and the Father do not dwell with those who do not love them. They don't want to be intruders where they are not wanted. And what do loveless people do? They break relationships. Loveless people do not keep the word of God. Loveless people are cold. They are indifferent. And sometimes they are spiteful. Uh, Jesus does not force you to love him. He doesn't twist your arm. But he and the Father send the Spirit to enable that. Without the Holy Spirit, we would have nothing. But because we have this Holy Spirit, it makes a huge difference. It, it gives us everything we need to be God's people. And here's what Jesus specifically says in the Gospel text for today that the Spirit would do for us in this regard. First, Jesus says that the, the Spirit helps us through things. It gets us by. It allows us to get from one day to the next without the whole thing coming down like a house of cards. The Spirit encourages us and exhorts us in taking the right path. He is a guide. He is your conscience. He's that still small voice that says, do this and not that. Jesus also says that uh, the Spirit appeals to God for us. That's Romans 8, verse 23, more spelled out. And finally, the Holy Spirit comforts us and consoles us. When it all hits the fan and when we're sitting pretty sad in the corner somewhere, that's when the Spirit is that hand on our shoulder that just spends time with us, that groans with us, that mourns with us, that weeps with us, and yet that lets us know that we are not forsaken and forgotten. And all of these three things are bound up in one Greek word, parakletos. It's derived from paraklesis, and that one word has all of these meanings of encouraging and exhorting, appealing and comforting. It's translated as helper, it's translated as comforter, and in the King James it's just translated as paraclete. They took the paracletos and chopped off the os and left paraclete. And, and, it, and the problem is that when you look at this word in modern English and you see paraclete, you think of a pair of track shoes. Uh, it's not like that. But just one Greek word gets all of that meaning, all of those three points that I just mentioned. The cross. That's how powerful that word is, and that's how powerful the Holy Spirit is. And then the Holy Spirit also teaches us all that the Scriptures have to offer. This lines up with baptism in Matthew 28, 19 through 20. A Christian life is a baptized, Bible-filled life. Simply said. Finally, the Holy Spirit brings what Jesus has said to our remembrance. You see, he helps us put the whole, the, all of what Scripture has to say into practice. You know, because we might, who knows what we might do, but we are guided into making God's Word our deeds, the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us the life-giving Word of God when needed. When we're stuck in, in trouble and you don't know what might come out of your mouth, the Holy Spirit is what makes something based on Scripture come out, instead of, you know, something that would be worse. And finally, the Spirit makes the body and blood of Christ present under the signs of bread and wine. And in all of this stuff, there's no fire to be seen. The fire, it seems to have gone out. 
what, what's going on here? Because, and, and the secret to this is probably something imagined by Johann Sebastian Bach in his B minor Mass. The article of the Holy Spirit uh, opens up in the creed section of the B minor Mass with this melody set at a pace for walking. That's why the tempo would be andante. And it means to be at kind of a walking speed. The idea that the church is walking through life, walk, walking through this uh, valley of the shadow of death even at times, but definitely walking through this world, in the world but not of the world. And as we walk through this life and as we suffer these slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, the Spirit walks together with us and enables us as Christians to walk together and to be supported as only God can do. Does not solve all of our problems, does not wave his magic wand. Rather, he is with us through thick and thin. There is no fire here. The fire seems to have gone out. In fact, if you want to talk about this as a relationship, it's not like a pair of torrid lovers who can't keep their hands off each other. It's more like an old married couple. You know what you got. You're thankful that you got it, right? That's how it goes. You're, you're familiar with each other. It's good. And, and you know, you just, you, you've learned how to live together. You've learned how to sojourn together. The fire was there is an important thing. The fire was there to show that this is not something that people just cooked up. The fire was there to show that the apostles, in fact, had all the street cred they needed from the Lord God Almighty. The fire was there to show that we too had been given that same kind of power that that fire might have had, but we're given it in a quiet way. We're given it through teaching. We're given it through very mundane things. And yet those mundane things have just as much power as the Lord God, the pillar of, of uh, cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night that led his people through the wilderness to the promised land. Some very mundane things like baptism, the Lord's Supper, and the scriptures will lead you through, as God's people, through this wilderness to the promised land that awaits each and every one of you. Yes, that fire had a specific one-time purpose. And you should probably not try to chase after it, because you'll be chasing rainbows and unicorns. The Holy Spirit has been promised to you as Jesus has promised to you. And that's to say, it's very down to earth. Jesus himself promised that down to earthness. So instead of looking for the, the flash bang and the entertainment and all this other stuff, you know, the Holy Spirit is not promised to come through the fog machine or the bubble machine, if you're Lawrence Wall. But uh, rather, he's coming through scriptures, through baptism, through the Lord's Supper, through some very basic stuff. But that, even though it's not flashy, even though it's not this, that, and the other thing, it's like having a really good, long-lasting relationship you know you can count on. It's there, Holy Spirit is there for you for your entire life. There each and every day when you open your eyes, there each and every night when you close them again. And you hope to open them the next day. When you lay you down to sleep and pray the Lord your soul to keep, the Holy Spirit is there with you as well. The Holy Spirit walks with you each and every day because Jesus has promised to carry you through life using his Holy Spirit. Carry you through life and into eternity to make you his dwelling place, not only now, but also when you get to see him face to face and say, thanks, bro. You get to shake his hand or maybe high five him. Who knows? He's probably a cool dude. He'll be fun to know in person. Wait for it. The Holy Spirit will make it possible. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the one true faith in Christ Jesus. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all according to their needs. Lord is
especially remember those who are traveling, who are prepared to, to move, to relocate, who are going to see loved ones, who are just dealing with uh, a lot right now. We ask you that in all their preparations and travels, you keep them safe, especially for those who are traveling long distances this coming week. And we ask that uh, you spare them from any kind of uh, calamity and uh, let your holy angels guard them throughout uh, their travels that they might come safely to their destinations and enjoy any new phase in life. Lord, your mercy. We ask that you be with all who are in require divine healing, those who are in recovery and rehabilitation, uh, those who are dealing with chronic issues, those who are struggling with cancer, who are living in assisted living, who are dealing with pain, who are awaiting organ transplants, who are uh, struggling uh, with uh, some pretty heavy-duty diagnoses, and we ask that your spirit rest on them especially. Uh, those who are uh, recovering from broken bones, those who are uh, coming to terms with the course of their life being run, those who have been uh, suffering uh, illness and communicable diseases, those who are struggling with dementia, uh, those who are uh, really uh, hard hit by, by illness. And we ask you to be with all who are recovering in some fashion from surgery. And uh, only you, Lord, know their condition. And only you, Lord, can <coughs> heal them completely if it be your will. But even if you don't, Lord, send them your Holy Spirit to walk with them through their ups and downs so that they might know that even when things look desolate, even when the locusts have come and destroyed the field and the fires have come and burned away, all the, the life and the animals are panting for breath and panting for water. That even in such miserable conditions, they can turn to you and receive comfort. And that you will not condemn them. But save them, Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we ask for your divine guidance and protection for all the mothers that might be in need right now, that they might take care of their young children. Uh, with the, uh, the formula shortage. And we ask for your blessings upon our military, first responders, medical caregivers, and their families. And be with them through the, the trying situations that they might have to face. Uh, be with our society, and uh, even though it seems that people don't know what right and wrong is these days, you still do. And your Holy Spirit still does. And give people the ability and the opportunity to learn what your word says about right and wrong and make that part of their own existence as well and live that in their lives, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray also for those in authority and we ask that you be with all of those who are put in positions of uh, authority and, and uh, bless them, give them your Holy Spirit that they might discern true wisdom and not the false wisdom of the secular world, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. For these prayer requests, Lord, and uh, for all that are known only in our hearts, Lord, we set them before your throne of mercy, trusting in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This time we have left you off. Please rise as we sing together the offertory.
page 208. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, church, that your sons and daughters might proclaim the wonders of your salvation in Christ Jesus our Lord. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon your gathered people, that, faithfully eating and drinking the body and blood of your Son, we may go forth to proclaim his salvation to the ends of the earth. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, who art in heaven, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ, in the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take heed, this is my body which is given for you. Let's do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also he took the cup after supper, and when he given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of all your sins. Let's do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Amen.
salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord makes face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee his peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.